When we look at the world around us, we see an irrational chaos full of shapes and sizes, curves and lines, textures and dimensions. Details are everywhere. There are so many varied characteristics for us to see. The rock formations of a great canyon, some majestic snow-capped mountain peaks, a breathtaking sunset at the beach, a field of horses, or a rainbow in the sky, or a simple butterfly landing on a flower, or in a crowded streets of a bustling, hustling city. There is an endless display of light and dark, with soft and deep shades of colors all around us. These colors influence our thoughts and emotions, and most certainly, our creativity. Now what if we looked at the world in a new way, with no emotions or feelings? What if everything was rational and precise, all thought out and placed with perfect order? What if there were only clean lines with no curves and only certain colors? What if we saw the world more like math? <gasps> Wait, what? You may be wondering, what does math have to do with art? Well, this is exactly how a group of Dutch artists and architects thought that art and design should be. They formed a style known as de style meaning the style, the style embraced the rational abstract centered in basic visual elements. The idea behind this was that their artworks and designs would convey a non-emotional, universal language using general geometric forms. Straight lines, angles, squares, and rectangles were used to form structure with precise order and harmony. Each line, space, and color was carefully thought out and placed. Most of the time, these works were created with only a few colors and shades. The Netherlands-based style movement and the body of works it refers to took place from 1917 through 1931. The movement not only turned its attention to painting and sculpture, but virtually all other forms of art as well, including industrial design, topography, and most noticeably in the realm of architecture, helping give rise to the international style of the 1920s and 30s. One of its leading members, Theo van Doesburg, also published a journal by the same name that served to further spread the group's theories. The De Stijl Journal became a vehicle through its first-year articles to help define the aims for one of the group's most central and celebrated figures, Piet Mondrian. Piet Mondrian was born in the Netherlands in 1872 and lived until 1944. He was introduced to the art world when he was young by his father and uncle, who were both artists. He showed talent at an early age and his paintings were typical of that time frame, mostly landscapes of an impressionist style, artworks with emotion and details. He was painting the world he saw around him. In 1911, he discovered cubism, art made using geometrical shapes, which was a big influence on his later style. In the early 19th century, Paris was the place where all exciting new art was happening. Mondrian felt he needed to go there, so in 1912 he moved to Paris. He spent the next several years developing his own style. He wanted simple purity to come across, and so he began to change from trying to do what other painters did and started to do his own thing. How did he come to paint this way? Well, the more he looked at trees, buildings, and vases, the more he saw their basic shapes and colors. He especially liked painting trees. The gray tree in 1911 was one of the first paintings where he applied the principles of cubism to a natural subject. Can you see the shape of the tree in this painting? It shows how he began to develop his abstract style. The trunk and branches of the tree have become a network of horizontal and vertical lines. Another good example of where he saw what he was looking at in a new and different way 
is two paintings of the same natural setting, painted at two different times. First, in 1911, Still Life with Ginger Pot No. 1 is painted using the Impressionist style, with colorful brush strokes and a realistic appearance. Then, in 1912, Still Life with Ginger Pot 2 is painted using his new developing style in the abstract, using only lines with much less color and detail. You can see how the very same setting can be seen and conveyed in two very different ways. This can also be seen in the styles he used in his own self-portraits from 1900 to 1942. The portraits show how his style evolved from realistic detailed brushstrokes and colors to more abstract and then to a simple line drawing. He would come to term this style of simple lines and colors as neoplasticism, meaning the new art. You can try this too. Find something to look at, then just squint your eyes while you're looking at it, and all the details will start to disappear. You will see only shapes and colors, no real objects. This is what Mondrian did, and eventually his style consisted only of geometric shapes and primary colors. After all, every shape can be created from the basic geometric shapes, and every color can be created from the base primary colors. Starting in the 1920s, Mondrian only painted in his new style, for which he would become best known for. Can you guess what his favorite colors of choice were? I hope you guessed the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. For the last 20 years of his artworks, he would only use these three colors, along with shades of black, white, and gray. Sometimes he would change the thickness of the lines, other times he would place them closer together or farther apart. He thought very carefully about where to place each line and never used a ruler to measure them. He created a composition, an arrangement of shapes and images in a picture. His progressive and increasingly stark works were well received throughout his lifetime. He painted about 250 of these geometric abstracts. His style is so easily identifiable that it became a symbol for modern art. Many people refer to him as the original abstract artist. In about 1940, due to World War II, he and his family would leave Europe and relocate to New York. The new and lively city would prove an important source of inspiration for his late works. His paintings of that time express exuberance in city life, such as New York City One, where all the yellow he used was inspired by all the New York City yellow cabs. Although he liked his art to be ordered and precise, he was also passionate about dancing. Not those traditional slow dances, but high energy, fast paced dancing styles. This would inspire the last few of his works titled Broadway Boogie Woogie, which was a popular dance at that time, along with Victory Boogie Woogie. Mondrian was so interested in controlling his environment that he even transformed his own house into one of his paintings. He covered his studio walls with rectangles in primary colors of gray, white, and black, and he eliminated most of the furnishings to just the most basic and sparse. He painted all of this furniture white or black, and he painted his record player bright red. Mondrian was so consistent in adhering to his rules that for a simple tulip flower and a vase in his room, he painted the leaves white since green wasn't a primary color and not permitted. Mondrian's unique style appears to be timeless and continues to influence architecture, all facets of design, and probably most noticeably in fashion. What do you think about this style? Does it look easy to make? The rules are simple. It's true, you just need to figure out your own arrangement of shape and color with precise lines and angles and a good eye to make the work seem right and balanced. How would you create your own composition?